there's a team in college football that nobody's talking about that really has a chance to step up and surprise some people. Who is it? Pull up a chair, sit back, relax, and I'll tell you. What is up, college sports fans, fellow members of Mountaineer Nation? This is Coos, and welcome into another edition of Coos's Corner. So pull that chair up, and let me serve you up another shot of top-shelf college football knowledge. On tap today, we're talking about a team that's kind of flying under the radar right now that could potentially win their conference, and nobody expects them to win their conference coming into the season. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about the UCF Knights of the American Athletic Conference. But before I get into this, I ask that if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Please share it out with your college sports loving friends. And last but not least, please drop a comment below and let me know what you think about the UCF Knights and their chances to win the AAC this year. If you, and folks, if you like Big 12 content, this right here is the channel for you, especially if you're a West Virginia Mountaineer fan, because that's what I focus on here is Big 12 and West Virginia. Now let's get on with the show. The UCF Knights, they were playing a game this past Thursday night, the same time that my Mountaineers were playing the Baylor Bears. Now, that Baylor-West Virginia game got a lot of the attention because, obviously, two Power 5 teams, and it was a really good game. But at the same time, UCF was playing Temple. And I know Temple's not very good. They're only 2-4 and four on the season. But UCF put on an absolute offensive clinic. They beat Temple 70-13. to 13. That's right, 70-13, to 13, folks. I mean, it was an absolute one-sided domination. UCF was actually losing at, in, at one point in that game, 10-7. to 7, But from there on, it was all UCF nights. And UCF, even though they haven't beaten a team with a winning record yet, they are winning their games decisively. They have a really exciting and explosive offense right now, led by quarterback John Rice Plumley. When you look at their stats on the season, pretty, pretty intriguing, actually. They're number three in the country in rushing offense and number one in the American Athletic Conference at 261.2 yards per game. They're number four in the country in total offense and number one in the American with 525.2 yards per game. They're number 11 in the country in scoring offense, averaging 41.3 points per game. They're number 44 in passing offense, which, you know, that doesn't blow you away, but they don't have to be because they're running the ball so well. And they're, doing all, they're also doing really well on third downs. They're averaging 48.9% conversions on third down, which is also leading the American Athletic Conference. So their offense is just rolling right now and clicking on all cylinders. And like I mentioned earlier, the big reason for that, or one of the big reasons, is quarterback John Rice Plumley, the transfer from Ole Miss. He came into Ole Miss as a QB. They moved him over to a wide receiver, but he wanted to play quarterback for his senior year, so he transferred over to UCF to play for Gus Malzahn, Chip Lindsey, and that offense. And even though his passing numbers won't blow you away, he's having a really successful and really solid year. His numbers on the year so far, he's 107 for a 168 passing, which is 63.7% completion percentage, for 1,516 yards, 11 touchdowns, only three interceptions. So he's taking care of the football. His QBR right now is 71. But running the ball is really where he's been most impressive. He's leading the team in rushing as well. He's carried the ball 87 times for 468 yards and seven touchdowns. He's averaging 5.4 yards per carry. And oh, by the way, he's 14th in the nation in points responsible for per game. John Rice Plumley has been responsible for 18.7 points per game by himself, whether it be throwing the ball or running the ball. And what's really cool about it is even though his passing numbers won't blow you away, they are solid, they're consistent, but he's spreading the ball around to different receivers. They have two different receivers who both have at least 25 catches on the year and over 300 yards. They are Javon Baker and Ryan O'Keefe. Ryan O'Keefe also happens to be their kick returner who does a really good job there as well. And then they have two running backs, Isaiah Bowser and Johnny Richardson, who have 315 and 270 yards respectively in rushing. And both, both of those guys can also catch the ball coming out of the backfield. So that offense right now is clicking on all cylinders. And their defense is not too shabby either. Their defense is not as explosive as their offense. But they're good. They're solid. They're middle of the pack in the country. They're number 30th in the nation in total defense, number three in the American Conference. They're number 11 in the country in scoring defense, number 41 in rushing defense, and number 50 in passing defense. So, you know, as, as long as their offense can keep putting up the numbers they're putting up, their defense doesn't have to be elite. As long as they can remain solid and consistent, they can still win some football games. Now, like I said earlier, 
They've done it so far against teams that don't have a winning record. So far, they have beaten the following teams. South Carolina State, 56-10. Florida Atlantic, 40-14. Georgia Tech, 27-10. Yeah, Georgia Tech's a Power 5 team. That's their only Power 5 win. But Georgia Tech is a really bad Power 5 team. Matter of fact, they just recently fired their coach, Jeff Collins. And then SMU, they beat them 41-19. So, none of those teams have winning records. I get that. Now, their one loss is to a Power 5 team in Louisville. And Louisville's not that good of a team either. Todd Satterfield himself is uh, rumored to be on the hot seat right now at Louisville. But that being said, that was the second game of the season. And I think if those two teams would play today, UCF might beat them today. Because I think they're a better team. And I think, you know, John Rice Plummy has, has now had six games into the season to adjust to this new offense, to this new system, this new staff, everything. So I think if they played Louisville today, they would win. Now, the schedule, though, is going to get really tough. Here's what their schedule looks like going forward. But next weekend, the 22nd, they go to East Carolina, who's a good team. They're 3-3 three three on the year. We're one missed field goal away from beating North Carolina State. Then their next three games will really tell how good this team is. They have to play at home against since number 21-ranked Cincinnati. Then they go to Memphis, and then they have to go to Tulane, who's 5-1 and one on the year, and have a vict- has a victory over the Kansas State Wildcats. And that's Kansas State's only loss this season. And Kansas State right now is in the hunt to win the Big 12 Conference. So they're a good football team. And Tulane beat them. So they have three, four, four really, four tough games coming up in a row, East Carolina, Cincinnati, Memphis, and Tulane. And then their last two games, Navy and South Florida, both should be victories. But that, that stretch right there over these next four to, end, to close out October should, and, and go into November should really tell us how good this UCF Knights team really is. But I think if this offense can continue clicking the way they are right now, they're going to be a hard team to beat. It could very well end up being ranked at the end of the year and could end up playing for the American Conference Championship. As we remember going into the season, everybody was talking about Houston or Cincinnati being the favorites to win this league. But do not sleep on UCF because I think Gus Malzahn has got this team rolling. He's got them in the right direction, and the future looks bright. If they couldn't get ready to come into the Big 12, they're, they're recruiting really well at a high level. I think not only can they do well this season, I think the future also looks good for this program. L- let me know what you think in the comment section about this UCF Knights team. Do you expect them to be contenders for the American Conference title the rest of the way? What do you think about them going into the Big 12? Do you think they're going to be able to compete as they enter the Big 12 Conference? Or do you think it's going to take them a few years to adjust to playing a tougher conference schedule? I want to hear your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget, if you want to support me financially, you can do it a couple different ways. You can check out my merch store by clicking the link at the top of my description box. You can join my channel by clicking the join button right below, becoming a channel member. There's two different levels. When I get back from vacation, I'm getting ready to leave for Florida on vacation. When I get back, I'm going to be doing a drawing. I'm going to be giving away a mini helmet of your favorite team. Only channel members are going to be allowed in that drawing. Country Roads level members get one entry. Mountaineer Maniac level members will, members will get two inches. So I'm giving you a few more days, a little bit more time to get into this drawing by becoming a Coos's Corner channel member. There are also other perks. I'm going to have my very first members only live stream coming up here in a couple of weeks when I get back from vacation. I'm going to have a very special guest for you. So don't miss out on that. Also, I'll give you early access to some special videos, merch discounts available to you, things like that. So take advantage of that right now. If you want to support me absolutely free, there's four ways. Like I mentioned in the beginning, you can like the video, share the video, comment on the video, and last but not least, please hit that red subscribe button. If you like Big 12 content, if you like West Virginia content, this is a channel for you. And I'm trying to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the calendar year. I need your help to do it. I'm at 3,600 right now. I think we can get there, but you've got to hit that subscribe button and get your friends to do the same. With all that being said, I really appreciate your support. Until the next time, Q Country Roads.